when we think of the Annunciation, I think the first thing that comes to our mind is the Archangel Gabriel coming to Mary with the news that she will be the mother of God. I think sometimes we forget that there is another Annunciation. And when that's God spoke to Joseph through a dream to take Mary as his wife, because she's pregnant by the Holy Spirit through the power of the Spirit. And I think what we learn from this is our relationship with God is not just a vertical relationship, just God and, my, and I, but also it entails other people, our neighbors. In this case, the Mary and God relationship has kind of involved Joseph. She has to have a husband. And like Mary, Joseph too says yes to God's will in his life. A lot of times we look at our faith while just between me and God. A lot of times people say, well, I have to, why do I have to belong to a church? I am a spiritual person. I pray. God is everywhere. And that's all true. But remember, Jesus taught us the greatest commandment is to love God and your neighbor. We cannot separate them. We can't just love God and don't worry about our neighbor, nor can we love our neighbor and not worry about God, our relationship with God. The other point about the gospel that I'd like to draw your attention to is the name Jesus. And the angel tells Joseph, you shall bear a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Because he will save his people from their sins. I think today we kind of lost that sense that all of us are sinners. And sinners, not the sense that we are bad people. Sinners in the sense that we haven't reached our full potential, our full potential to love as God loves us, our full potential to say yes to God when it means a great risk for us, whether for Joseph, which is the, his honor, his name in the community, for Mary being stoned, for being found with child with the, outside of marriage, and that's why the angel always starts with the message, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. We can't be afraid to admit and acknowledge we're not perfect. We need help. And Jesus is the one who came to help us, God in human form. A human being like us, except for sins. The God who chose to take upon himself the sins of the world so we can one day share in his eternal life. And one way for us to acknowledge our sinfulness and to begin to reflect how can we grow, how can we be more loving, how can we be more confident in saying yes to God's will in our lives, is through making ourselves available to the sacrament of reconciliation. Not because we need the priest to tell us God forgives us, we can say, well, I know this, but so we can take the time to reflect on our lives and see those areas where we need the light of Christ to shine upon, to see those areas where we can be more loving and we should be more loving, and to humbly accept God's help to help us to grow in that love, to open up those parts of our lives to the power and grace of God. We cannot do it alone. It's not about, you know, self-help book, by going to the sacrament of reconciliation, we acknowledging that we need Jesus, whom God sent for the forgiveness of our sins.